And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Majolica. Now, Majolica is a tile-laying game in which you are trying to fulfill cards that need a specific tile configuration. It almost looks and sounds like a Zool, although I would like to kind of squash it here at the beginning that say they're kind of alike maybe theme-wise, and there's maybe a few comparisons, but other than that, I wouldn't really say they're in the same ballpark, so I'm not really going to be comparing them in this video. I know that Z's already reviewed this, but I want to take my own look at it for a couple reasons. One being that uh, Jason told me this was the best game of 2018. So if someone says that, I'm like, well, I should probably check it out. He told me I would like it quite a bit. It's definitely a thinky style game. I don't know if we're going to see this one picked up and brought to America. I would imagine possibly so at some point. But let's take a look at how the game plays, and then I'll tell you what I think. Now, most of the game is going to take place on this board here. There are 16 tiles that are going to be shuffled and placed face up like this. Each player is going to get one of these boards placed in front of them. These are your workshops where you're going to be building different things, and you'll get a starting card that you can put into one of your workshops. There will also be cards next to the board. These are cards that players can take over the course of the game. So one player is going to be given this starting tile. They're going to go first, and you're going to keep taking turns until there are less than four tiles on the board. You're going to be turning tiles over as they get used. When that happens, then the round ends. This passes to the next person, and that person goes. So it's possible to get two turns in a row, or go once, and then the round ends, and then you don't go for a while because of this passing around the board. So keep that in mind. So the first thing you'll do on your turn is you're going to take some tiles, select some tiles. You're going to take tiles that are in the same row on the outer edge. You can take one whole run of or column of tiles on the outer edge, or you can just take one tile on the outer edge. So for example, I could take these three reds and a green and turn these over. And when that happens, I'm going to take the corresponding three reds and a green, and I'm going to place them in one of my workshops. Maybe I place them all in this workshop down here. Uh, if there are already tiles there, I can discard some of them as I place them in there. So then the next person's turn, maybe they're like, hmm, this is now the outer edge here. So they just want to take one tile, so they'll take this blue one here. The next person after that can take this, this, and this. They can take all these, they can take this, or they can take these two, or they can take one of the ones on the outer edge. And you'll keep going. When the round is over, You'll take all these tiles, you'll shuffle them up, and then you'll place them face up again. So then you start over again. Now, why are you doing this? Why are you taking these tiles? You're taking it because you're trying to complete these cards. As I take tiles, so I'm putting tiles here, let's say, for example, in this spot here, I manage to get the tiles that I need to in this spot. So what you're trying to do in each of the workshops is get a very specific goal. So let's take a look here. In the first workshop, you need to have three of one color and three of another. In this workshop, you need to have two, two, and two of three different colors. Here, two and two. And here, four of the same color. Now, here I have, for example, three and three. So when that happens, I must take one of these tiles and move it up here, which means it doesn't work if I can't do that. I must take one up, and then I may take up another one. So I'm going to take up a yellow and a green. I haven't finished this card yet, but now I'm on my way. Then the rest of the tiles are going to slide over here. So I'll slide over these two yellows, and I'll slide over the greens. There's not enough room, so I'm going to discard a red and a green. Now I have two, two, and two. Let's say this card was above here. And now I must move one up, so I'd move up the green. I can move up, and then I have two optional moves up. I move up a red, move up a yellow, and then these would move over here. And that's kind of how this works. Here, you must move up one, and you must destroy one before moving them over here. Here, if you get four of the same color, there's no card that could be up here. You can only have three cards at the most. And so then you would take one of these purple tiles, which is a wild, and you would place that purple tile in this thing. And after purple tiles are gone, then you would start taking point tiles. There's also a point tile that will go to you if you manage to run all four of your machines in cascading order on the same turn. 
Now, you might say, well, why would you ever just take one tile? Because when you take one tile here, you also can take a card and put that into an open spot or replacing a card that's already on the board. Or you can take a card and move it from one location to another location in here. That's pretty much it. When a card is completed, you'll take all the tiles off of it and you'll put the card somewhere to show that you've scored that card. When one person has done five cards, the game is over. You'll get points for each card that you've completed. This one's worth three points. You'll get points for leftover pieces on your cards and any of the tiles that you have are also going to be worth points. And there's also a little bonus you know, missions you can add if you do these missions. You know, the first person to do whatever will also get some bonus points. Whoever has the most points is the winner. So the tiles in this game, they almost look plastic. They're not. They're, they're like, um, they're cardboard tiles, but they have such a high, like, varnish on them that they almost feel like plastic and look like it. I do wish they were double-sided. This is kind of annoying because you have to constantly be turning them over to find the colors that you need. This is really a pretty game. I don't mind how it looks at all, but I will tell you that when we play and you take the tiles, we just take them off the board. It's a lot easier than flipping them over, than unflipping them and mixing them. We just take them off the board, ham ready, shuffling them, and putting them back on. But I will say that that became very tedious to constantly be pulling these tiles off and reshuffling them and putting them back on because you do it a lot over the course of this game. The cards themselves are actually quite good quality, uh, look really nice, and overall, I mean, I would say the production quality of this is good. The only, my only complaint is that these weren't double sided. So Majolica is a game that I think it's going to be hard for some people to grok. See, with Majolica, you are going to have to be constantly looking ahead. Now, I showed you some very basic things, but with Majolica, you're going to sit there and say, all right, if I take these, I can put them in here, which will let me move these tiles up, and then if I move those up, I'll have these left over, which move to here, which then will let me move up these tiles, move those here, but wait, I don't want that color there yet, hang on. Okay, I'm going to take this first. And there's this constant planning ahead. Because it's really important if you can cascade all four of your workshops, that's amazing. Getting a point, points are like spares in this game, so getting a point for that is pretty cool. But you have to think ahead and really set up for that point. So there's this really strong thinking ahead and setting up future turns. And for some people, that's going to feel like work. Others will enjoy that more. There's also the... That's kind of mixed with kind of whatever tiles are out there. Like, you could sit there and go, ooh, I really would like that those that a blue tile for example i really need a blue tile well the blue tiles happen to be you know the person before you picked it and now the only there's no blue tiles or they're only in the middle and you can't get to them and you're like well all right well i'll take a different color this turn uh, but it just worked out that way because the blue tile is not there i think the game is fine there's only one thing i, I actively did not like the constantly mixing the tiles up and turning them over. I felt that that was fiddly. There's a lot of games where you're constantly doing some sort of busy work, you know, moving cards and things. But this one, it just felt a little bit more annoying than normal. That's a minor complaint. A more major complaint that I would have is it just felt like you were constantly working in this game. Now, I got it. I could figure it out. And when I played, I, I do fairly well, you know, able to to get these and move them along. I haven't won the game yet, but I did fairly well, and I wasn't like, well, I got murdered. But I didn't feel like I enjoyed it tremendously. I thought it was okay, but I felt like the whole game was being played almost in silence because you're sitting there going, and then I also didn't really, by the way, I also didn't like the turn order thing. I felt that that was kind of, I get why the turn order changes, but I almost, because if you didn't have that rule, you might never have a nice outside row to take just because of the way the turn orders. But I didn't like waiting for, you know, like I would take my turn and then turn order would change and it would be the next person's turn. Or um, I'm sorry, I, it, someone, the person before me would take their turn and turn order would change and it would be the person after me. So I kind of, it felt like you had a turn skipped and you don't. And you could take two turns in a row possibly. But if you have to wait six turns between yours, that sometimes can feel long, especially when people are sitting there really thinking. Now, again, I have no problem with really thinking. I have no problem with it being a thoughtful game. But this game, again, I would play it. I didn't dislike it, but I think it just edges across. You know, when we come back and people are going to say, it's like Azul. Sure, but Azul is kind of fun and, you know, it's thinky, right? But it's like, woo, I'll take these tiles. Here I'm like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Move this to here, do that to this, go that to there. And then I felt like the luck of the card showing up in the tiles 
was maybe a little too much for how much work I was putting into it. So it's, 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 it's a nice game, and I think a lot of people are going to love it. I'm not one of them. Again, don't dislike it. And if you said, let's play it, I'd be like, all right, let's try it out. But I'm in, I'm in for this. This is going to be a bit of a work, and I'll do my best to try to win, but let's not socialize while we're doing so. I don't know. I think I'd rather socialize a little. So that's Majolica. My thoughts on it. I'm not really in agreement with Jason and him saying it's the best game of the year. It is for him, and I'm glad he likes it, and I, think, and I can see why he does. I can see the, what, the greatness that he sees in the game. For me, it's more of a, wow, I respect that, but I'd probably rather play something else. Dice Tower Judgment, very thinky, a little more work than fun.